All right, in section 4.8, what I would like to do is come back and take a look at this chart. And what we're going to do, I'm going to review the graphic that we had for 4.8, and then I'm going to talk about all the different kinds of error that we can talk about related to linearization and differentials. Now, if you will recall, we have a function f of x, and that function could be concave up or concave down, and that what we're going to do is we're going to have some value of interest and that value of interest is going to be called our center and so here usually we're going to have our center and what we're going to do in this problem is we know that we have this c f of c and we have a function we can use the tangent line to come up with a linearization an approximation of the function value as long as you are close to your center of approximation. So L of X is going to approximate your F of X when your delta X is small. Okay, and that's the idea of linearization. And that we were using the idea that whether F was concave up then the linearization is going to be an underestimate and when f is concave down it would be the linearization would be an overestimate all right now the idea here in in looking at this is kind of look at our chart is this idea is that this is our target this is what we want but we're off a little bit so this delta x is actually your what we call your error in measurement you are off from your center just a little bit. All right? So that's the first error that we talk about. The error in your x or the error in your input. In a manufacturing problem, you're looking at if I have an error in say the radius of the spherical bearing, it's going to cause an error in the volume. Okay? So this is your error in your measurement. Now, delta y, the error that is caused by you being off on the x. When I'm exactly right on x, when I'm right at c, I get the value f of c. But if I'm off on the x just a little bit, if I have an error in my measurement, that little bit of being off in the input is going to cause you to be off in the output. And that is going to be this quantity right here. So this is what uh, your textbook causes propagated error but most of the time they don't actually use the word propagated error. What you're going to be looking at is they're going to ask you to figure out the error in your output based on the fact that you had an error in your input and so that's where the propagated error is going to come into play. All right. Now the other thing I'm doing here is simply labeling some things that we're going to be using. Uh, we have our f of c which is this height right here, right? We kind of bring this over on the y-axis. This is the y value when x is equal to c. Here's your y value when x is equal to c plus delta x, your target plus an error in measurement. All right. And that your delta y, okay, couple of things, just formulas to look at. One way to calculate your delta y is to take the actual function value minus or well the error that you're going to get the because you're off over here the function value you get because you're off and you have an error in measurement minus the actual function value will give you this propagated error. Okay. Another thing to look at is this idea that when we are having delta x be small what we're doing is we're going to let dx your change in x that's kind of like your slope of your tangent line here we're starting with our run and your delta x are the same. Now the slope of your tangent line rise over run then this would be your dy. Your differential in your y and your differential in your x. Now notice that your differential in y and your differential your delta y the actual change are not the same. The uh, differential in x and delta x are the same. Now where did I get this formula? Remember that when you take the derivative of y with respect to x, we get f prime of x. Your differential form of this is to simply move the dx over. 
All right, so that gives us this. Now when we are calculating the slope of the tangent line, so the slope of L of X can be found, this is where, remember where your center, is, this is going to be when X is equal to C, is going to be your F prime of C, okay? And the point of that L of X is going to go through, the point that L of X is going to go through is going to be C F of C. If I need to come up with an equation for L of X using this, this notation, our L of X is going to equal the Y value of the point, F of C, plus the slope, which is F prime of C, times your X minus your X value of your point. So that's the formula for the linearization that we're using. We have a point, we have a slope, and we're calculating this. Right? And then we can choose X values to plug in and find an approximation. L of X is going to approximate F of X. Now, taking this even further, when we have C as our center, that usually what we're trying to do is calculate our differential when X is equal to C and we're off by a little bit, DX. So this differential form, when X is equal to C and our delta X is going to be the same as our DX, turns into dy equal to f prime of c, because you've got to calculate the slope of your tangent line, and then times your change in x, and change in x becomes delta x. And so that's another formula that's kind of important here. All right, so we have the differential in y, we have our slope of the tangent line, we have the point that the tangent line is going through on the curve, we have our differential form that we then plug the values in to get this. We have our actual change in y. And then we have our linearization, which is going to be approximating the function. And then the other thing is, is that how do we get the actual change in y? Just like we use the linearization to approximate f of x, we are going to use your dy uh, to approximate delta y. Okay, so those are all the things, that's a summary of everything that we've talked about in this section 4.8. Now, let's go back to this idea of the summary of the errors. The first error that I talk about is the error in the tangent line approximation, the error caused by doing a linearization. Your linearization that you pick, the y value of the linearization, this L of C plus delta X, is off of the actual function value, which is f of c plus delta x. And so the first thing is, is this little section right here, and I'll put this in red, that's the first error that is talked about, and it's the error due to the linearization. So in the questions, it'll say calculate the error in the linearization, which means find out how far off the linearization is from the actual function value. And we learned that when f is concave up, the how far off, we don't really know how far off, but we would know which direction it's off. If f is concave up, the linearization is an underestimate. And then if f is concave down, the linearization would be an overestimate. And to find this actual error, you take your actual value, y value, at this x plus c or c plus delta x, minus your approximate value there. You had an error in your measurement, delta x, that caused you to be off on your input. So we want to take the actual function and plug in the error in the input, and then we're going to use the linearization to calculate the approximation, and the error that occurs is going to be the difference between the two. Now the only reason absolute value is there, and technically I guess I should call this the absolute error in the tangent line approximation, because it's not taking into account above or below, it's basically finding the amount that you're off, and that's why the absolute value is there. Now notice that there's actually two ways to calculate uh, this error that is located right here. You can also take your delta y, which is this distance, and then this, of course, was your dy, that the difference between these two is also the same thing. 
Now, n just to kind of show you that this does work algebraically, here's my formula from above. I'm just bringing it down. Here's the f of c plus delta x. Didn't do anything. This is that formula for your L of x with your point c f of c, your slope f prime of c, and we've plugged in the value of interest c plus delta x in for our x. So that's nothing more than plugging c plus delta x into the equation of L of x, your linearization. Now I distribute the negative. When you distribute the negative, you'll see that we have now um, this part right here is going to have the c and minus c is going to cancel. So I have delta x, and then you have f prime of c, and here's my f of c, and now they're both negative. Now the next thing I do is I'm going to regroup. I'm going to group these two together, which hopefully you'll recognize from the previous page is delta y. Then this part right here was exactly what we're using for, d, um, for dy. And so I just make that plug and chug here. And so I did the delta y first to kind of show you that. And then I turned that into dy. And so the change in y, the actual change in y, minus the dy, the differential in y, is going to give you that same error. So that was the error due to the linearization. Okay. The ones that we talked about on the previous page, you have your error in measurement. In other words, you had C, F of C is your target, but you are off of your input. So you have an error in your input. And that error in measurement or error in your input is how far off of your center you are. That's delta X. All right, your propagated error, again, they don't really go around saying propagated error. They basically say, what's the error in the quantity y given that you had this error in your quantity x? All right, so, and that's your actual change in y. That's delta y. And we could calculate delta y directly if I take the input with the error added in and find its y value and then take the input without the error added in and then subtract the two. So that would be kind of common sense. Um, and again, the can change this to be the absolute error if we simply take our delta y and we put absolute value bars around it. So that would take out the above or below part of it and only look at the amount of error that you have. All right. And then the main idea of the differentials is that given that you have this differential form, when you're at a specific center of approximation that you're looking at, a specific target, and you have a small measurement error, and again, you don't need to know how small is too small or not small enough. They're going to give this to you. And uh, we're going to let delta x and dx, they're always equal to each other, and then we can approximate this actual change using the differential in y and the differential in y at x equal to c is going to be this. All right. So that gives us kind of that error in y given your measurement error in x. Then the next one that we talk about is your relative error. Now that one's probably the easiest because they basically say find the relative error. Determine how large your error in your output is relative to the actual size of y, which is something useful to know, that knowing that y, delta y is approximately 0.5 does not tell me in how large that is. If the values that you're being comparing it to only run between 0 and 0 0.6, then having 0.5 off is going to be, you know, pretty huge error. But if 0.5 is your error up here and your sizes of your y's are a million and ten, then obviously 0.5 is not really that big of an error. So that's what we're looking at. So we calculate a relative error by taking, you know, technically it should be delta y over y, but we never know this one, so we approximate delta y with dy and we divide by y, and which is basically take your derivative over your original function and that will give you a formula for relative error. Again, we can turn this into absolute relative error 
by simply adding absolute value bars around it to take out the plus or minus that comes into play when you have um, above overestimate or underestimate. And then once you take this into account and you get your relative error, this is basically your proportion, right? That this is going to be some fraction of your whole, part to whole, change in y over y, and so this is basically giving your proportion of increase or decrease. So proportion of increase or decrease. And then once you have your proportion, a number between 0 and 1, if you were to take that relative error and turn, want to turn it into a percent, you don't do anything more than multiply by 100. And so that's a summary of the errors that we're going to look at in this section.